be the first of a few videos looking at how we identify unknown cations. We're going to use um, a flowchart found in Beginning Chemistry by Wignall and Wales um, as our primary basis of this and it's got a lovely flowchart in it that helps us with working out um, with working out these. The first one we're going to do today that doesn't actually really require the flowchart because some cations are actually coloured and here I've got three examples of those. On the far left is Fe2+, which it may be hard to see, there is a very, very pale green. Then I've got copper 2+, which is a blue colour, and then that orangey, yellowy sort of colour of iron 3+. Just put my lab coat behind, hopefully see that greenish tinge of the iron 2+. However, we still do need to confirm that they are what we think they are, um, because some anions have colours as well. For example, um, dichromate has got a yellowy orangey colour, so it could be confused for the iron 3 plus and so on. So I'm going to go through each of these one at a time and show you what you do as confirmation. So after you see the colour of it, you would go, oh, I'm pretty sure that that is iron 2 plus because it's a pale green colour. How do we confirm it? Well, the most useful chemical for us here is going to be sodium hydroxide. And with that we see that we get a green precipitate there. Hopefully, hopefully you can see that quite clearly there. And that green precipitate, sort of a forest green colour, is what we're looking for to confirm that it is indeed due to the iron 2 plus. So if I add NaOH, this goes uh, a green precipitate. If I add it to the iron 3 plus, then you'll see that we get a rust, not surprisingly, a rust coloured precipitate. So an orangey brown precipitate. And if we do the same thing to copper, we get quite a nice blue precipitate there actually, quite a nice looking one. However, there can be some confusion, confusion with these because some anions will also cause there to be a precipitate if you weren't adding, say, sodium hydroxide, but something, something different. So we actually need to confirm these. But before we go any further, every time you get a chemical change in this, you have to write a chemical equation. So the first one here, it doesn't matter what it is, I think I grabbed iron 2 sulfate from memory, but it doesn't actually matter which iron 2 it is, the rest of it is a spectator. So I'm going to write Fe2 plus, plus now and I add sodium hydroxide. It's only the hydroxide ions that matter. And it's going to make iron 2 hydroxide. So because there's two, two pluses, so there's a 2 plus charge here, I need two 1 negatives to balance those out. So it becomes FeOH2. So that's this one here. For the orange brown precipitate, this is a different one altogether. This is Fe3 plus. So Fe3 plus plus 3 plus, so I need 3 hydroxides. 3 OHs goes to FeOH3. And the last one is our blue precipitate. Sorry, I'm sticking well with my colours here. Cu2 plus plus 2 hydroxides goes to CuOH2. So we've got a chemical equation for each of those. Now there is actually a way that we can further confirm these. And I'm going to need new samples of, of both the Fe2 plus and the copper to show you what I mean here. So here I've got some copper again. And in this one I'm going to put some iron 3, in this case nitrate. Now iron 3 is quite a cool chemical because when I add 
potassium thiocyanate to it, which the, again the potassium is a spectator, it's the SCN negative ion that matters, check out the colour that we get from this one. It's gone a blood red colour. Now this is something you met in the equilibrium topic. And that is our confirmation that it was indeed iron 3 plus, that, oh, the one that made the orange brown precipitate. So we need, again, we need to show a chemical equation for this. Now these equations are what we call complex iron formations. These are the ones that are showing a better understanding of chemistry, so contribute towards excellence. Fe3 plus reacts with one thiocyanate iron. Now that seems silly because they don't balance out. But what they're actually doing is they're making square bracket FeSCN square bracket 2 plus. So it's actually making an iron called a complex iron. And this is one of the things that helps you get excellence. So this colour here is normally an orange colour. This one here is blood red. So this is to confirm that you have Fe3 plus present. Sometimes we can't be sure whether it's Fe2 plus or Fe3 plus or if the colour's due to the anion or something like that. So we confirm it with the potassium thiocyanate, the SCN negative ion, and it makes that lovely blood red colour. The copper, copper 2, has got another really awesome one that again, we need to make sure that maybe the blue isn't caused by another iron in there, that it is indeed copper. We've got our blue precipitate, but that again isn't enough. We need to go a step further. So for this, we get ammonia. And what we do is we first of all add just a very small amount of ammonia, just a drop or two, and I've gone too far on that one, and it will make our blue precipitate again. So that's exactly the same chemical reaction as I've got up there. And that's because ammonia is a base, so it contributes hydroxide ions. When I add excess ammonia to it, be with me while I do this, then it goes this wonderful royal blue colour. And that royal blue colour is again due to a complex ion being formed. So first of all, we've got Cu2 plus plus the hydroxides, sorry, two of them, plus two hydroxides contributed by the ammonia, um, and that will make this solid. Then what happens after that is the solid, we don't have to show the hydroxides in this, but I'm going to, the solid then reacts with two ammonia molecules. So we've now we've got excess ammonia, it's the ammonia reacting, not the hydroxides. The hydroxides are there because ammonia is a base. When I have excess ammonia, then I make this. Cu, sorry, square bracket, Cu, NH3, 2, and this has got a 2 plus ion. And those two hydroxides have been released back into the solution. You can't forget those, or else your equation isn't balanced, and that means that you won't get the excellence for this. So that's the ones when they've got a colour. We have a look first of all at their reaction with hydroxide and see what precipitate they make. Then we confirm their presence for iron 3 plus, confirm it with F, uh, sorry, with SCM to make this blood red complex. With copper, confirm it with concentrated ammonia or excess ammonia to make this complex. Don't forget that the hydroxides get freed up to make it a balanced equation.